All this stuff about religion, though, Jesus, you bunch of Jesus freaks, no interest in that, any of that at all. Well, anyway, so I'm working at this restaurant. It was kind of like a big boy restaurant. And I, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Am I allowed to admit that here? I just don't know. Is it okay? Oh. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you, okay? The Wolverines can be God's choos- chosen team if the Buckeyes can be grafted in. Then you have to accept me. Is that okay? We'll be the Gentiles. You guys be... All right. Uh, but anyway, Columbus, Ohio, I'm working at this uh, family restaurant, kind of like a big boy restaurant, and th- there's my girlfriend at the time. We were dating each other. She was a waitress. I was a waiter. Uh, we were teenagers. And what happened was the manager of the restaurant invited us to go to church on Sunday morning. Did you guys come to church? And my girlfriend's like, let's do it. Let's go to church. I said, I don't want to go to church. First of all, I can't stand waiting on those church people on Sunday afternoons, okay? They're lousy tippers, which be good tippers. Would you please do that? Okay. Uh, I can't stand those people. They're a bunch of jerks. Why in the world would I want to hang out with them on Sunday before I have to go wait on them Sunday afternoon? Forget it. And she's like, oh, come on. Let's go to church. So, so, all right, fine, fine. I'll go with the religious Jesus freaks. So we go to church that morning, and we're sitting there. It was a decent-sized church. There's probably about six, 700 people in the church. The pastor, the pastor, he's given a sermon, and it was, it was a pretty straightforward sermon. It was a fire and brimstone sermon, and he told us point blank, there is a heaven, there is a hell. While you're alive, you get to decide where you spend eternity. The moment you die, your decision is made. That is it. If you die tomorrow, do you know where you will be for all of eternity? And I'm sitting there, and i got to level with you. Okay? I would love to tell you, I would love to tell you that I accepted Jesus Christ for all the good, warm, and fuzzy, positive reasons of, oh, I had this God-sized hole in my heart, and He filled my emotional needs, and I had this longing spiritually. For no, can I be honest with you? For me, it was, I'm living dangerously. I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff. I mean, let's face it, I was hung over because it was Sunday morning. Saturday night is get stoned and drunk night, okay? That, that was me. Uh, but I'm sitting there thinking, if this is true, if this really is true, how stupid am I that I'm putting all of my eggs in the basket of 70 to 80 years on this planet. When you think about eternity, and honestly, folks, this is what was going through my mind because, look, I'm a very logical person. I'm logical, I'm analytical, I'm extremely left brain. My whole thing is let's look at the facts, let's look at the evidence. And I'm sitting there processing in my mind going, if this is true and there really is a God, and I kind of accept there had to be a God. That's one thing I always knew. There has to be a God. There's no way that the universe just sprang into existence on its own. That's not possible. All the complexity of the design scientifically, I know there has to be a God. So I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, if there is a God, and then that means we are created by God, it does make sense that we would be eternal beings. And so if we are eternal beings, if this guy is right, and I'm going to spend eternity in hell because I'm too stupid to put all of my eggs in the basket of 70 or 80 years on this planet, not to mention the fact there's no way I'm going to live 70 or 80 years. I'll be lucky if I make it to 20. That's what was going through my head. I was 19 at the time. Uh, What happened was then the pastor, he said, if you would like to settle the matter matter of eternity right now, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Settle the matter and you will be in heaven for eternity, washed clean of your sins. And so he did an altar call. Now, this was, this was over 30 years ago, okay? This was old school altar call, okay? The way altar calls are done today is like every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, okay? If you want to give your heart to the Lord, jiggle your ear like you're bidding at an auction and you'll be saved, okay? <laughs> but let's be honest, back then, back then, uh, it was a completely different story. It was like, who are we going to humiliate today? Who wants to be humiliated? All right. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what he did was, I want you to stand up in your chair and walk down here to the front. Well, 
there, there's all kinds. I've been a skeptic. I've been, you name it. But one thing I've never been is a coward. And so I'm like, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I'm like, all right. So I stood up. And as, as I stood up, I noticed my girlfriend stood up at identically the same time. And we didn't do one of those look at each other like the old to tell the truth. or Which one's going to say? We actually just both, I know, I really dated that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The rest are oh, to tell the truth. Watch it. Uh, we both stood up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Anyway, so we go walking down the front. And again, we're walking down. There's like, you might as well put the spotlight on and follow down, okay? <laughs> so there we go, walking to the front. And I'll level with him, feeling a little silly, a little stupid, a little whatever. But we're, uh, we're standing there. There's probably about 30 of us. And so the pastor leads us through a you know, traditional sinner's prayer, if you will. As I was reciting this, now, I'm going to level with you, and this isn't going to sound super spiritual, but I'm just being transparent with you. Here's what I was thinking at the time. I was thinking as I was saying these words, if you don't mean this, sit your blank down, the A word, okay? That's how I talked. Actually, I mean, every other word was the F-bomb. That's just who I was. So sit your A down if you don't mean this. And I'm like, no. No, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Let's do it. So I go ahead and I finish. And as soon as I was done, I, I turn to my girlfriend and I say, so what do we do now? You know, I got no Christians in the family. I'm first generation. What do we do now? And she was like, well, you, you probably should get a haircut because you don't fit in. I'm like, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, so this was Sunday. So I go out Monday and I buy myself a Bible. And I still have that Bible now. This thing is so beat up, you wouldn't believe. It's marked and tabbed, and half the pages are duct taped together and whatever. It's like, how do you get rid of your Bible, let alone your first Bible? Uh, anyway, so accepted the Lord there. And by the way, that, that girlfriend of mine, just last Monday on May 5th, we celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary, so, uh, which was great. And... And we are our first child, Colleen, when she was born, uh, we had her dedicated to the Lord there at that church. And as a matter of fact, we've had seven children, Colleen, and then six boys after her. Okay, how's that for a lot of kids? Okay, 